Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi. Hi. Hi <laughs> um, I'm so excited that the three of us, four of us, can meet here today. Um, and you know, we're all in different parts of the world, in the Asia Pacific, and up in you know the northern parts of the world in um, Canada. And I was just wondering um, if you could all, yeah, tell us what you're up to, who are who, who you are, what you're doing. Should we start? From the, should we start from Atoroa and go backwards? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Megan Tamati Cornell. I'm a curator at Te Papa in Wellington, and I'm supposed to be starting a position also at the Gavit Brewster Art Gallery, which is an Indigenous curatorial position, the first one they've really established. Who knows if that will happen, because Corona, of course, has played havoc with everything. Um, I uh, have been a curator for 30 years, and have really specialised in, in modern and contemporary Māori and Indigenous art. Because I, you know, for me, that was what I was trying to, what I was interested in looking at for a start, and also trying to kind of create space for. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, everyone knows who I am. Maybe not. I'm Brooke Andrew. I'm an artist. I'm the artistic director of the Biennale of Sydney Nedden. And um, yeah, we're here to have a chat about our lives um, and indigeneity and Biennales, but and beyond. Love you, Brooke. <laughs> Hi, I'm Wanda Natabush. I'm a Nishnabe Kwe curator, artist community organizer sitting here in Toronto, Canada. Nice to see you all. Hey. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, my name is Bill Ismahasan. Um, I'm, in, I'm in the Bunun, uh, Bunun Ataya and Ganaganapu Nation curators uh, in Taiwan. I'm the ind independent curators, especially for indigenous contemporary art. And uh, uh, I run my own space, uh, especially uh, the pr previous space only for the guest house, uh, which located in my own community. And uh, I transformed my space into the residency. And uh, I will start my residency from this September. And hopefully I can invite uh, my global semblance and the global indigenous curators, artists, and directors to to engage to participate in my projects. Thank you. Hey. Thanks, Boyong. And I think that's a really great way to start. Um, um, when you kind of you kind of on where you are in, in the world, um, the importance of, of your own community. And I know I remember when we went to um, Brazil and we met in Sao Paulo. And you know, then again, we met in Sydney for Mid and the Biennale of Sydney this year. It was so important in regards to the local, you know, how important it is to even get people to your local homelands and the kind of recognition that you're, you're kind of collaborating with in that space. And I was just wondering, you know, how, if you could maybe reflect a little bit about your guest house and, and what kind of dreams you have for that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I met. Uh, uh, um, I made proof. Uh, uh, we uh, we made in Sao Paulo, especially for Indigenous History Symposium, uh, curated by uh, Maspe. And um, yeah, uh, it's it's my great uh, greatest honor to participate in this international symposium. For example, there, there are not many, uh, many opp opportunities for, especially for uh, independent curators from Taiwan, especially for indigenous people. <coughs> I, uh, I quite feel like, um, I learned from your, uh, from your talk in, in the symposium. For example, uh, you say that uh, Nirind, uh, 
uh, when you was invited to the artistic director of the Biennale of Sydney and has not been an uh, the Aboriginal person on the board of the director and there are no full-time uh, Aboriginal staff for the Biennale. And uh, my dream, uh, when I saw your, your role, uh, I'm thinking about how an independent curators can um, can make impact and bring Aboriginal uh, artists from Taiwan to, to participate in more international exhibition. For example, um, uh, for example, one of the Lukai Nation artists, Alain Luluan, and I as assistant curators was invited by National Gallery of Canada. We participate the, to the second edition of Quinquennial International Exhibition at uh, National Gallery of Canada in Ottawa. Uh, I, uh, I really cherish that this kind of opportunity uh, to, to bring artists to, to attend the international projects. And also, Bruce, you invite me to, to participate your your opening week of uh, the Biennale. And uh, this is my, uh, I, I think this is my rich experience for me to, to be an international curator. And I hopefully can, can make myself more actively and to engage, uh, I would say that to, to engage and to curate Aboriginal cultural collective especially in Taiwan, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is this kind of like connection. Why is that, why is that important? Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just wondering what, you know, the drive is in the Taiwanese experience for that. The drive, you mean? Yeah, what's what? important? was important. Um, I think the important, the important is that, uh, we, do, uh, we do have the uh, Indigenous People Culture Foundation and they belong to the country of Indigenous people. But, uh, but the members of the foundation need to break down the boundary to invite invited independent uh, practitioners, especially for artists and curators or cultural workers, we need to, uh, 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 we need to make, uh, we need to gather together for, uh, I would like to bring the, um, the, uh, the great uh, case, uh, uh, case study from, study Canada, from um, the Aboriginal Cultural Collective meeting is really important for Taiwan. But I hopefully I can see that uh, the Indigenous People Cultural Foundation can play the right or uh, can play the vital role to run in this, to run in this annual meeting, or maybe we can meet the twice for for a year, to especially just getting together together and to think about uh, to share our own experience in our own community because we do have the seven more than seven hundred community and we quite a lot of rich culture, but. But uh, the main point is that, that our cultural policy is really important and uh, how the government, governmental institutions can support us to bring our artists to engage, to engage international exhibition. Unfortunately, uh, we do have this kind of, uh, we do have this kind of, uh, how to say that, uh, um, in, uh, aim, and we, we don't have, uh, we don't have this kind of, uh, how does, uh, uh, we don't prepare to, to engage, to engage uh, with, uh, with, uh, with other global international creators. I think it, uh, the, the, this is very important. And yeah, there, uh, in Taiwan, we only, uh, we don't, mm, we only have less than three institutional creators especially for indigenous people in Taiwan. And I'm the, I'm the few, I'm the one of the few, one of the few And so that's why 
uh, I would like to try my best to 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 create this initiative from from my own community for example, my residency space. I think this is very important. Mm. I was just wondering, I mean, because I'm wonder you've been doing Abaquad for, you know, the second one now, and this is like a really big aim to kind of bring different Indigenous artists and creatives together um, and collaboratively internationally. And also, Megan, I know that, you know, for example, you know, New Zealand, Canada, Australia, it's like a very solid triangle of Indigenous peoples and we've been, you know, creating this and, you know, many other people have been involved in this for a long time and yet, there is our friend, um, you know, our brother in Taiwan and many other places around the world. And this kind of was really exemplified in Ali when it came, when it came you, know, you know, recently. And I was just wondering, you know, you know, there's also this kind of idea of coming together, but independent curators that also, you know, curators who work at institutes as well. So I think there's two you know, different issues there. One, you know, you have a lot more access to resources when you're in an institute, but then you have the other kind of problems. And I was just wondering if, um, you know, any reflections on that for support for Boyong and all, you know, how that actually, how that happens. I think, um, I think it's really important to have a kind of a strategy going forward, like, um, doesn't matter if you're in an institution or outside an institution. I think if there's if there's a um, we have a curatorial group that meets, you know, a Maori curatorial group, and we had the um, there was a program that happened too, which was the Tri Nations Curatorial Exchange Program for First Nations curators, and it was the first opportunity really that we had to um, formally come together. For myself, I've been going in and out of Australia for like 20 years. <laughs> and so I knew people like yourselves. And, you know, for me, um, because I'm an Indigenous person and I'm from here, you know, and that's important to me, it's important when I go somewhere else to engage with the people who are of that place. I can't understand another way. I, wouldn't, I, I don't really know another way of operating. So what's interesting to me in Australia is actually... Aboriginal work and Aboriginal artists and Aboriginal people because they are First Nations cultures and I'm not saying I'm not interested, I'm interested in art, but I'm also interested in, like you talked about, the local and the global and I think what's interesting with Indigenous art is it's like, um, it's culturally located but it also has that critical edge, you know, in terms of contemporary. And for me, you go around globally and you find, you do find your brothers and sisters around the world and you do find um, people who are the same as you in terms of the way in which they're operating. And of course, culturally, there's differences, but there's also some similarities. And it's not just because of colonisation. To me, it's an earlier way of being. And, you know, like with Beyong, Maori is supposed to be very genetically close to or really related to um, Taiwanese, the indigenous Taiwanese. We're supposed to have come from there. So, you know, we have this connection which has never really been explored. I think it's been easier uh, to do the Australia, New Zealand, Canada because it's to do with resource. But I, I think indigeneity and that expanded definition of indigeneity is really important. And to, you know, people like Beyond who are working, Sami people. I knew people who I saw was in your Biennale, um, Brooke, um, really important to, you know, to kind of expand what that definition is. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, it's a, definitely an open conversation. I mean, Wanda, I mean, what's it been like? Well, how rewarding has that been for you in regards to you know, I've acquired, but also your role there and being an artist yourself. Well, I was just thinking about uh, when Megan was talking, I was thinking about the 1970s actually, and the first like major visual and uh, performing arts organization in Canada was started in 1971. And it was started through artists from Greenland, from New Zealand, from Australia, from all over the world. 
and these were performing artists because I think performance in a way like speaks was like quicker speaking to our past in terms of um, artistic practice that white people could make sense of. Um, and so it was a theater organization and they, they kind of uh, were international from the beginning. So I was thinking about them and one of the artists who was involved then is a good friend of mine now and she started the first kind of theater organizations, Mucka Kleist. Mucka Kleist. Um, and I think there are so many ways in which we've been talking across these boundaries for a very long time. And we always think we discover something new, but it's not really, it's true and it's not true, right? Like we've been, we've been actually uh, international before that, you know, before, um, before colonization, because we're many nations in our own places and we built societies uh, internationally then. And I think it's important to think about that. What does that mean? It means we can't fall into the trap of thinking about globalization in this way that's something new. We also can't fall into the trap of thinking of internationalism in this uh, or capitalism and global capital in this way as if it's something that di is not born out of colonization. And so our, our relationship to this international global space is really fucking old, like so old. Um, and that in itself lends something different to this conversation. So when I bump all the way up to Abaquad, it's, it's, um, it's just a new iteration of something we've been doing for a very long time. Its relevance has to do with something new, which is our kind of contemporary moment in the art world where we're desired by the bien biennials and by museums. And we have to take control of that moment. If we don't get, take a little bit of control and able to say who the artists are, what we think is important, then we're just letting ourselves be another tourist object again. Mm -hmm. I mean, one, one, one really exciting <laughs> thing about the Biennale, but also is that, and also must fair, is that it gives this opportunity for us all to come together. And one really interesting thing is that it was this project called the South Project, which happened in Australia, connected to southern nations, you know, from South Africa to Chile, you know, South America, etc. Um, uh -huh. um, but even some you know, artists like Lola Amira from South Africa, like her and I were talking, and she was like, oh, but we should do this more often, like we should connect more. And it's like, well, actually, yeah. we have been already connecting. And like you say, um, um, but, but I think that also there's a great opportunity where we can go to places like Taiwan, for example, or we can go to, you know, we all meet somewhere else. And I know that there are kind of financial implications to that or, you know, strategies around. Or COVID. Yeah. <laughs> at the moment, definitely. Absolutely. So it is about this kind of how is it then that we kind of keep this ball rolling? You know, I mean, you, you yourself, um, Boyong, coming to, we're going to Sao Paulo, to Brazil, and then we met and you also presented. And then, you know, there were other, you know, um, indigenous people from Taiwan, uh, I was so grateful, also came to the Biennale. It was more than just one person who was representing uh, many nations. And I think that that's something that's very exciting. So how is it that we, we keep going, especially with, with COVID? And what does that mean for us? Because, I mean, we've been doing it for such a long time. Do we have to fit into the models of these, you know, the kind of, uh, the typical kind of um, models of, of bureaucracies of museums? And again, it kind of reminds me of the independent curator, like Bo Yong, you're creating that, but also, you know, um, both of you, I know, Wanda and Megan, you know, you do your own independent work, but within a structure as well. I was just wondering, what's that like? What's that like? I suppose for me, working within that structure, and it is a beast, you know, you work within a structure. Um, I have never been limited by it, or I've never seen myself limited. I think that's how I've survived in there. 
I've always seen my project as much bigger than the institution I work to, work within. You know, and of course I'm loyal to that institution to a, to a point, and I'm, there's things I can do in there. But it's really a platform to kind of shift some things or to make some things happen. And so, you know, I buy work for the collection, so I'm actively trying to build an art history. But it's not a mainstream art history, it's almost an alternate art history. And it's our art history, it's a, 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 a modern and contemporary Māori and First Nations art history. So I'm trying to put in things and support artists that way and really about the platform um, and what it enables you to do. Now, you can also do that independently. That's the, I don't think there's an issue. The issue is around resources and support to be able to do it independently. And if you've got, you know, I mean, if you've got resources and support, then you can do whatever. You don't have to be tied to an institution. I don't necessarily like being tied to an institution, but <laughs> as I said, what it enables is a profile, I suppose, a platform. We've had a bit of delay in the uh, camera and stuff. I heard you laugh, though. I know, but way after I I'm laughed. Finished. <laughs> yeah, you're frozen, though. <laughs> um, I was just thinking I? about... Yeah, your vi visual is. Maybe it's just on my phone. I was thinking about what you said in terms of institutions <laughs> and working independently. Um, I agree with you. Um, I think we do what we do where at, wherever we are and we do it for somebody else to a certain extent and there's something important about that. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's frozen so I can't see what's happening. Um, I think uh, I've worked independently my whole life. I've only been in an institution for three years, so less than three. Less than three. Um, but I still think that when I walk into the institution, I'm thinking about what, what our folks need from this institution. So I'm not thinking about myself, my career, all those things. I'm not thinking about what the institution has done. I'm thinking really about how can I make it work for us in some way that makes sense for what it is as an identity, for who we are, for who I am, for who the artists are. That's why, um, Megan, I think you're, you're saying something very clear in terms of like you're doing an art history, you're doing shows with specific artists. Um, that's what institutions are for, actually. Um, in that sense, it's like if you're working, oh, like for, if you're working for, for uh, an art gallery, the magnitude that we do, you're going to make sure it's working for our people, <laughs> the histories it needs to tell that haven't been told yet. And then there are other spaces where you make other things happen. They're not, you know, it, it, it's all situational. Yeah. Yeah. And Boyong, I mean, what's it like, I mean, in regards to, we're talking about hundreds of nations and, you know, the kind of the connections and the way in which that, like, nations are split up, like Indigenous nations. And I know that for the, the Americas, I mean, you, you have Canada, for example, then you have USA, you have, you know, Indigenous nations that are crossing borders. I mean, there's a kind of complexity there. Very similar to Australia, but at least we're kind of like one nation, but still we have state and territory boundaries. And I was just wondering, um, for your experience in Asia, um, and also your connection to other indigenous you know, groups throughout Asia. Is there, a, um, you know, is there some kind of solidarity there? Is there a movement there? Has there been a history there? Yeah, I think it'd be a, a group. Uh, this is a really nice question. And I say indigenous, uh, I say indigenous uh, young curators in Taiwan. And um, I think that, uh, we do, uh, in Taiwan, the indigenous contemporary art mm -hmm. development and history, uh, I think is has happened since uh, 1990s. And for example, there's uh, 
there's a Benali called a uh, Polymer Art Festival exhibition, uh, art, art, uh, Polymer Art Award Festival and exhibition, and since 2012, and until now, there's almost you know, there's ten, almost ten, ten years history. Ten years history. And, uh, this is a governmental uh, platform, especially for indigenous artists and curators or cultural workers to apply to submit it to your artwork and to uh, again uh, attend this competition and to receive the artwork. And I, I recently uh, submitted my PhD thesis uh, in Thai uh, code, International Relational Space and Performers Curating Together towards sovereignty in Taiwan and beyond. And I'm thinking about, uh, does this artwork is really important for our indigenous, ourselves as an indigenous artist or practitioners. And the, the, the platform, uh, uh, the, the platform of Benali, uh, uh, Polima Art Benali is really important, but but we, but we are, uh, but we are lacking of discussion about our further development of our uh, in, in indigenous contemporary art uh, history. And and um, my, my role is indigenous uh, uh, independent curators. I think uh, I think um, the, uh, to to create. To, to cre create a collaborative practice is really important because I think collaboration is fundamental to an artistic of many artists, artistic evidence, not only in indigenous contemporary art, but also in our indigenous way of knowing in immediate format. And I also believe that our um, uh, Taiwanese indigenous artwork uh, for example, uh, the shape as the object and sculpture and performance or concept, and um, we need to we need to gather together to to discuss uh, and to create the concept of our uh, curatorial uh, collective initiative, and to bring this concept and to uh, to engage with uh, uh, with you guys and from across the world, you work in different uh, Benali or in different uh, institutional uh, uh, space of the museum, governmental museum in different country. And uh, because I'm, I'm quite worried about that, uh, our government, government is going to establish our indigenous museum this year. This is the, uh, they, they would like to, our government would like to establish the the platform for inviting the practitioners and scholars to uh, to make the uh, the concept of uh, what is our indigenous museum look like, but but they forgot to invite uh, um, independent uh, artists yeah. to engage to discuss what is this. So I hope to I hope to bring I hope to give my suggestion to to our council of indigenous people. Um, it is really important to invite independently, uh, independent practitioners to make this happen, uh, to, to create our own indigenous museum. And also I hope that uh, the indigenous museum should put the contemporary, uh, contemporary space in this building, but they, they, they only, they only thinking about to establish ethnographic um, space uh, in this building. I think um, it is the it, uh, it is my task to make this happen. Yeah, I mean it's kind of very interesting. When I was in Japan and Hokkaido meeting Moin Kiki a few years back, I actually went there with um, uh, Mami Katayoka when she was curating the last city Biennale before Niren, and we went to the Ainu Museum in Sapporo and. It was slightly ethnographic, but also I did have some Ainu people there. But I mean, Ainu have never have never been in any contemporary art exhibitions that I know of. And um, this is also supported by um, Mami Katioka. But the interesting thing about what you're saying is that, for example, I know that both Megan and Wanda and I have been involved in uh, 
discussions at the Tate Modern, for example, and also recently Wanda and I with uh, the Guggenheim. And those curators and those kind of institutes are really thirsty for their own way of catching up, so to speak. And it's kind of interesting how they're seen as kind of world leaders, you know, within that kind of, you know, Western art paradigm of what fine art is. I mean, and we saw this movement when it came to African, African art in the past. And, uh, and uh, it seems to me that you, you, know, you, you yourself, um, um, Boyong, and your country, you're really experiencing that at the moment where there's this kind of fear in a way that this ethnographic kind of identity will, you know, kind of be out there to the popular masses before there is this kind of reality kind of even balanced uh, view of your own culture. Um, and I was just wondering, I mean, Megan and Wanda, I mean, that, that, these have been really interesting discussions that, that we've had with those, those institutes. And I was just wondering what, what is the what you With the Tate Modern, I was, I was um, interested, I didn't think I'd see it in my lifetime, actually, that they were wanting uh, to know about Indigenous art and how to include it. And of course, my response to that was kind of like, it's modern and contemporary art, people. You know, it, it's, you know, I'm not saying that it doesn't have, you know, like Māori stuff doesn't have a Māori reading. However, you know, where people go to art school and, you know, like, don't treat us like we're so different. But, you know, I mean, then there's still a thing. They're wanting to do this. I've understood that they're wanting to do a project at the Tate Modern around Māori modernism. But one of the things that keeps being said is it needs to be of quality. Now, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. You know, like, it needs to be of quality. What, what does that mean? So that whole connoisseurship around art and to think that ours yeah. is less than is just bizarre to me. You know, I mean, I, you know, I can't really... Yeah, I, I think it's really interesting that they're wanting to actively be in that space. And I think that they do need to be informed. They are slow in comparison. <laughs> but Megan is actually raising a really important point, I think, um, as always. <laughs> That's why I admire you so much. <laughs> and vice versa. But I do think there is something about we're dancing lines that were made by somebody else. And these lines in the sand have been drawn. Were drawn before we even entered the conversation with any autonomy. As we have autonomy, we're realizing we don't want the same lines drawn and we don't want the same conversation to happen. So we have to both say, like we're in art school, we, we understand Western discourse on art and our artists want to get into museums and they want to do this or they want to do that. We have art histories to write. And then we also have to say the histories are different and they also draw on different um, sensibilities, different histories, different uh, understandings of what art is, what community is, what Sorry. even a fucking drawing is, you know? And so we're having to do this dance, you know, all the time between these two things of saying, yeah, it's not that different, but it's really different. Yeah, yeah, great. And that's uh, fundamentally <laughs> where we all stand and how we make our judgments about what we should say, what we should write, what we should do. Um, but hopefully never with the idea that we're trying to please somebody, only with the idea that we're trying to Make room for the work that made, make it understood properly, you make room for the artists that have been working for a really long time, and make sure that their work is being put in the right like space and um, uh, writing, same like write exhibitions, but also that the community that feeds us is seen in the most complex light it can be. Um, but I mean, it's kind of interesting because there are these like, you know, Western traditions and also, I mean, the, the strength of Asian and African art too. I mean, there is a lot going on in the art world. Yeah, I mean, I, it yeah. kind of still reminds me of the old 
social anthropologist trope and primitive. But it's not different in the sense that even Asia still deals with the West, you know, like, and still kind of uh, has the same conundrums about how we make space for our own histories, our own, you know, our own things without like both being swallowed by something or reacting to something. Like how do you create an independent sovereign space within that? Mm. Doesn't matter where you're in this world, we're all facing that question. Yeah. So it's really the eye of that needle. And um, how, is it, how is it that we can kind of shift? Kind of shift. What, what is it about that kind of interesting space? Um, and, uh, you know, where we're getting closer together now, you know, we're kind of meeting at, uh, you know, events uh, in the past. We're getting on Zoom calls to these institutes. I mean, we are <laughs> empowering ourselves within those spaces, but, um, I'm kind of really interested in, therefore, what are biennales? Well, what are these kind of major big international exhibitions in the context of what we've been talking about? Like, what is the usefulness of it? Um, and the- and Well, it's really useful really when you're in charge. charge. <laughs> <laughs> really not useful when you're not, <laughs> to be honest. And I'm not Sometimes. being flipped, I mean it. Yeah, no, sometimes they're not useful because they continue to perpetuate ideas that we know aren't necessarily so, you know, or aren't right or aren't, aren't actually a reflection of what's happening now, you know, and that idea of different people being handpicked and not really considered helicopter curating, people flying in, pick some a bunch of people and move out again, you know, it's not appropriate and not really understanding how things actually operate or so I think there's a there's a way to do biennales but in a different way and I think um, you've shown that I mean to take that platform of the Sydney Biennale which is a mainstream platform and completely upend it as you have Brooke with Niran which was absolutely fantastic to me is it's it's time it's about time you know and that you've done it and so successfully yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah. it's done. You know, I think that that's, that's, I mean, I think that's the future is to be able to shift those, those parameters and reimagine them in a way, reimagine things, recalibrate things so that it does, doesn't operate from that Eurocentric kind of point of view. I think that you can open that space. I, I, I wanted to... One of the things that's exciting about Sydney is its closeness to Asia mm. and its viewpoint between the West and the East and the fact that it hasn't been that long that's been looking East, you know? Um, and Brooke and I had a conversation about what Indigenous is, you know, as we're like looking at the globe. And as somebody who spends a lot of time in the Middle East, it's, it's really, which you know, all these words make no sense unless you're dealing with colonialism or whatever, but we use them because they make sense. It's like my sensibility about art goes well beyond um, what I've, you know, what I've taken as my job because I know I want to fight for artists that um, just have been ignored for so long but I also have this major interest in other arts in the world. And you and I had a conversation about the Middle East and indigeneity, which is a really complicated conversation. And it's really complicated and beautiful because at the end of the day, like what do I want? I want conversations with human beings who are doing really uh, innovative, interesting things that carry us to a new place in this universe, you know? like. What are we doing ultimately? I'm not like protecting the world just so Anishinaabe people exist, but I'm protecting it so much that we can. But I still want to talk to everybody else in this world, you know? And so I think by constantly referring to the West, we can't have these yeah. conversations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like the Wiradjuri experience. I mean, what it was like for my family and my grandmother on the mission and then like the way in which that 
like that's only a generation or two ago. I mean, we are still there, but I'm still here, but I'm still somewhere else. And what does it mean to be labeled First Nations or Indigenous, you know, in the United Nations, uh, you know, the kind of conventions that they have leave out a lot of other people who would call themselves Indigenous. And um, I think that the way in which that those kind of uh, labels are formed and created are definitely <laughs> about... Um, they're not ours, yeah. Yeah, they're not ours. And I'm um, even with Cambodia, working with the Bopana Centre in Cambodia, mm -hmm. um, you know, some people I spoke to said, oh, no, there are no Indigenous people in Cambodia. But there are. Because the, because the Indigenous people are... <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it's the same thing. You know, I met a Japanese. Yeah. There's a Japanese uh, artist in Australia, um, very interesting person. And I was talking about Moin Kiki and her people, and he said, "No, there are no indigenous people in Japan." And his father comes from Sapporo. And so mm -hmm. I think that there is this, you know, regardless where you are in the world, there's yeah, there is this absolute complexity around that. But I think that that there is also um, this ignorance and this fear. And, uh, and I think, as I kind of briefly mentioned before, this kind of idea of primitivism or the kind of the past, um, the Stone Age, and that how that's all conflated within the kind of conscious, the kind of imagined consciousness of um, civilization. And as you mentioned before, one day, you know, capitalism or, you know, what is it? What is it about these kind of markets within the art world that drive very particular views of art and how that you know, kind of trickles down? And shifting that is very threatening, you know. For not well, we, we, we know what we're desired for, you know. We're very clear about, like, you know, we're desired both for our past and, our, and the absence of it, you know, those two things in one. It's like as much as you can be authentically pre-contact, beautiful, as much as you can, like, forget that you have ancestors, beautiful. It's like we're in a conundrum in that sense. So let's not cater to desire at all. Mm. How was that for you, Boyong? I mean, is this something that um, you feel, you, you know, you're living in your homelands there and do you get out? Like, I mean, have you been traveling much throughout Asia or, you know, what are those connections like and what are people's kind of ideas of indigenous Taiwanese? Uh, yes, um, I um, I have not many experience uh, to travel in Asia, but only only one experience. I was invited to 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 be a moderator to present in the um, uh, in in Laos, in Vantan Laos. As they invited they invited a Venice, uh, a Lao and Thailand's artists. Yeah, they are, uh, the the majority of the the local people they would like to be recognized as indigenous people in the east asia uh, southeast mm -hmm. asia but most of this country uh, didn't recognize them as uh, indigenous people they only uh, they, uh, their their government only recognized as the uh, minority people and it's quite interesting that because uh, they, they feel that they are indigenous people because they live in the mountains, especially in the deep mountain. For example, one of the law, our elders artists, um, she, um, uh, she, she good at weaving and to make, uh, to, to make the big installation uh, in the space. And, and also she was, uh, she was invited to, uh, to present uh, the, uh, her artwork in um, in Brisbane, uh, APT9, um, uh, two years ago. And I think, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm, um, my most of the experience is, is living in the UK and uh, uh, I nearly finished my PhD. And I'm thinking about when I, when I finished my PhD, especially in, in UK and exit, I'm thinking about um, is this is this uh, is this worth it for me to study the indigenous art in the Europe, especially in the UK? And when I finish my thesis, and um, it's my own task, it's my own uh, responsibility to go back to my 
go back to my home, home community again and to create, create the concept of uh, curating togetherness. And I really want, I really want to, um, to looking forward to hearing your experience about what is your, what is your concept of curating togetherness used to negotiate transcultural and transcontextual dialogue of performative, performative power and knowledge, especially uh, to specific uh, content narrative of indigenous curatorial practice through your own project, through your own practice, especially in your country and beyond. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yes. Was that a question? Yes. <laughs> 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 because we we we, uh, we get it together and and in recent years, and when um, I'm really uh, I'm really so excited when I invited to attend to meet my semblance from you you you're you're my semblance and uh, you have many many experience. I'm the young indigenous curators. Sometimes that I I quite lonely uh, to to establish this initi initiative and keep myself and keep myself all the time every day and tell myself I, what kind of concept I would like to bring, I would like to share and bring to my elderly and to my parents, to, uh, to my uh, sibling and the children in my own community, in Taiwan community. Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, maybe, I mean, there's two things there. I mean, I'd love to briefly chat about what, your question was, but I think that solidarity and connectivity and support is really important. And I know that, I mean, and both Megan and Wanda have talked about that kind of connection to each other. And there are existing um, curatorial groups or connections. And I was just wondering, um, maybe Wanda or Megan could talk about that. Um, but I suppose just to quickly answer your question, I mean, I think that, I mean, being an artist, I'm not a curator. I think that's a very different kind of training, but then again, being Wiradjuri, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it all kind of bleeds and blends and whatever. And, you know, we just put on the title, you know, to fit within a certain system or place or protocol. Um, but I think that the most important thing is that it needed to be artists and First Nations led. And that means even if there are non First Nations people within the group, I mean, it's still through that philosophical base. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are themes that I had on, I use the word themes, which is not really a theme. They were just kind of really inspirations like Durgan, which means earth, you know, literally earth, like the earth under our ground. But for that, it meant sovereignty and coming together and working together. So I think it was really important to empower people to express their own desires and connections. And it was very important for, for us to kind of find people, um, you know, the time to come together and find <laughs> to come together as well. I think that was a very important strategy um, because it's about building community and going that extra mile. It's not just about flying in and flying out as Megan was saying in regards to kind of curators, but also for artists as well. And, and the artists that I kind of connected with really wanted to know and understand indigenous society or country in Australia. Um, and a lot of those, mis, you know, kind of preconceived ideas were blown out of the water because people then had to learn about a whole nation and the way in, in British colonization and invasion and the frontier wars and genocide but also resistance and you know sites of resistance and um, so I think that, that that these are kind of um, you know doing a Biennale in Sydney through Nidden was a way in which that people can not only learn about the local and learn about the kind of indigenous experience in Australia, but also how it is full of indigenous people from all over the Asia Pacific region and, and all over the world actually. And so it's a place of, um, of coming together or asylum. Um, and, and yeah, but I think that this kind of thing that you talk about in regards to um, support I mean, I know, I'm Megan, I mean, that's something that I know that it's very close to your heart, isn't it? Yeah. I was, uh, I just picked up on what you were saying. I was, when we listened to Arthur Jaffa talk, it was fascinating for me when he talked about watching some movie and saying, you know, he saw this black man in the movie, and it was an Australian movie, obviously. And for the first time he triggered, it triggered, he thought, these other black people, it's not just you know, 
you know, black people in America or black African people, there were another race of people who were darker than he was. And that really made, it blew his mind. And I found that fascinating that he then kind of wanted to know more. And, and that engagement, he talked about some movie he'd watched and the impact of that on him and that realisation, because perhaps, you know, in America, perhaps you don't understand what's happening in Australia. Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by the thing of support. Um, I don't know if I can, I don't know what you mean by that. Well, just the way in which that you connect with other curators and... Um... Really? Yeah, okay. So that's really important. I think there is, I mean, it is about creating a community. It isn't just about moving in, moving out. I mean, like, Brooke, with you and I, for example, I mean, the last time I had seen you for, since we, before we were in um, London was probably you know, I was think I was eight months pregnant and um, it was like, you know, 19 or 18 years ago, you know, so it was like, for me, it was like fantastic to see you again and to see where you had moved to as a human being. So I think those communities, about building communities, those relationships are very important. I mean, Wanda, you know, through the things that she's been doing. And I mean, I feel like I do have people throughout the world who I know so well and who I trust implicitly, you know. Yeah, yeah. Those are relationships that it's not just in and out. And through your Biennale, I meet other people in other communities. So for me, that idea of building a community is really, and that movement and supporting one another is really important, yeah. you know. I mean, I, I, I don't think it can be underestimated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know what happened to Wanda. Maybe she's ran out of batteries on her phone. <laughs> or a <laughs> car or a ferry. <laughs> it's evening. Maybe she's, um, yeah, she's caught up. But I just wanted to thank you, you know, you both and Wanda so much for joining this conversation. Um, it, you know, it's a real privilege that we've all been able to, you know, gather together again since the opening. To see your face, everybody's faces, you know. I mean, this technology is weird and COVID has made it so that you can't actually physically be. But I think that idea of being able to see people from different parts of the world and to see your actual face and talk to you in real time, even though it's virtual, um, through the internet is is amazing and fantastic yeah. yeah i love it yeah, some ups to it it makes us yeah. think more yeah it does indeed thank you boyan <laughs> thank you megan thank you wanda, oh. <laughs> <And> wanda. <laughs> so we're gonna go now yeah